press play. Wicked. Cool. Right, um, hi guys, I'm Alison, I'm from Coventry, and as the wire guy described where he was, I'm going to describe where I am, because so I just said I've got to stand here for the first 30 seconds, so that's the only way I'm going to do it. So, um, Coventry, it's probably 17 minutes from Birmingham on a train, 55 minutes from London on a train, and is um, very lovely. Don't all laugh, it is. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I'm just going to talk a bit about um, social, social media, um, our strategy, and some stats, because I like stats. All right, cool. So we've um, been doing social media stuff in Coventry for about six years. Um, the reason why we started doing social media is because we had a shockingly awful content management system, which couldn't let us do anything. And it, even if you tried to make it pretty, it was just awful. Um, and it was just really slow and horrible. Um, so we set up a little Facebook page and a Twitter page. And also, we didn't have a chief exec at the time, and we had outsourced IT. So no one really said we couldn't do anything. It's great. Um, so my boss just said, yeah, give it a go. And our kind of social media stuff kicked off. Um, oh, no, we're, I keep forgetting we're in Scotland. Okay, right, in Coventry, when we have snow, like even bad that much, it's like the world's falling in. Um, so we had a little bit of snow, and all the kids got really excited that their schools would be shut. Um, so they went on our website probably five, six o'clock the day before they were meant to be going back to school, and they were just basically brought down our servers, our website, the lot. Um, and I was pretty new, and I was like, oh my word, what am I going to do now? Because we had outsourced IT, didn't have anyone to contact, our server was slow anyway, blah, blah, blah. It was all a bit of a disaster, so I meet there having my tea, and then I had some friends text me saying, do you know if this school's open tomorrow? And I'm like, oh. even if I did, I couldn't tell you, I have no website to tell anyone anything. So um, I text my boss, and bear in mind, I was still very new. I said, by the way, I'm going to be using Twitter and Facebook to do all our school closures tomorrow morning. And he's like, you sure? I'm like, well, I haven't got any choice. So that's really where our social media stuff um, kicked off. Um, we published all our school closures on Twitter and Facebook and got up to about 10,000 Twitter fans, um, Facebook fans um, within two weeks um, just because our kids wanted to not go to school. So um, there's some of our kids there. Um, that's our Christmas light switch on. Um, I just thought I'd show you some pictures of Coventry because I can. Um, this poor girl with the rabbit, though, I feel a bit... <laughs> <laughs> I think um, they're all watching um, some guy who I'd never heard of um, singing... Uh, I Wish It Would Be Christmas Every Day, is that, is that a popular song? No, it's some other guy. Roy Wood. Yeah, so all these kids have probably never heard of them, like I hadn't. And they just go, oh, amazing guy. Um, so internally, um, we've got social media guidelines. Um, we haven't got a massive strategy. We haven't got a thing that people sign. Um, we have guidelines based on how we're using social media and kind of what makes sense. Um, we, had, we, we just had them in our heads and we just told people. Um, but then legal would get an audit for something and they said they needed something. So I just typed it all up, what we normally did, and they were fine with that. So we've got social media guidelines. Um, we've got a Yammer group. How many of you use Yammer within your councils? No. No one uses it? Okay, so Yammer's... Um... Oh, meanies. Um, yeah, we, we've got Yammer. It's like an internal Facebooky type thing. Only people um, with matching email addresses can get in unless you let them in. Um, it, it does groups. It does a news feed. It's, it's business Facebook. Um, so we've got that within our council. If you've got an um, uh, enterprise Microsoft agreement, you get free enterprise access to Yammer because Microsoft have bought them out. So, oh yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what we do. So we've just got all our different people doing social media in this Yammer group so we can share what we're doing. And in terms of training, what we have, what I imagine any, who's comms here? Who's, who does social media stuff? This main, okay, some at the back, some at the side. Um, you probably find that people come up to you and say, I want a Facebook page and they don't have any reason for it. Um, so what I do is I drag them into my office, I bribe them with a free Jardy pen. It usually works because we've got no stationary budget, so I was like, free Jardy pen. <laughs> um, so bribe them with a free Jardy pen, they come in. Um, I, don't, I don't actually offer them a drink because I don't have tea and coffee in the office, so I feel a bit mean, so that's why I give them a pen. Um, they come in and I say, well, you know, um, why do you want to use Facebook? And they go, 
Oh, because everyone's on Facebook. And then you just have this whole discussion about what they're actually trying to achieve. And when you work out what, what they're trying to achieve, it's actually not necessarily Facebook they want. It's just a, a promoted tweet or something. But it, it just really helps meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. Some people, as soon as you meet them, you know that they're going to be absolutely amazing doing stuff. And you think, right, just make sure you know that whatever you put on social media, if you're happy to see it on the front page of the paper, then go with it, we'll leave you with it. If you want any help, bring us up again. And we've got a few people like that. Um, we just try and make sure that it's not a hobbyist type thing. It's like, oh, I want to do it today, and then they forget about it next week. So we make sure it's built into the team. So if a, if a team says, oh, on our, strat on our strategic plan, our manager says we have to do stuff with Facebook, we make sure that, as well as in their strategic plan, they can fit it into their day-to-day -day purposes. Um, we had one team who worked with 13 to 19 year olds and they had, we have to use Facebook and Twitter. So I was like, well, how are you actually going to do this? And they said, oh, well, we've dedicated one officer for one hour a week. And I was like, what, one hour kind of spread amongst, amongst the week? They could check it, but then only kind of put stuff on there. No, 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 we're going to check it. We've got a slot in our diary for one hour a week. And that's when you kind of think, yeah, that's not going to work. So... That's why I do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, what we do have is the council code of conduct, the council IT code of conduct, which covers people's use of social media. So we don't have a specific one. Right, so some more numbers because stats. Um, so in terms of accounts, we've got um, one massive Facebook page with about 30,000 likes and then smaller, more specific ones. And I counted up as about 50,000 likes. Um, our population in Coventry is 320,000. Um, but... The thing that um, we, we hop back to when we've got councillors who are very keen on the Coventry Telegraph is that the readership of the Coventry Telegraph is actually lower than the number of likes we've got on our main Facebook page. So it's just trying to put the kind of the old school, school traditional media against the what they class is new, young, funky thing. Um, Flickr, often when I say Flickr to people within the council, they don't really know what it is. Um, but I think the stats kind of speak for themselves. We've got 7,000 photos on there and 1.5 million views of those photos. So although people don't know what it is, people are seeing the photos we put on there. Um, sometimes we embed the galleries within um, our pages on Jardy. Sometimes we just link out to them. Um, but the numbers are dead, dead high. Um, yes, clicking. Scary. That's going to go on Flickr, isn't it? Is that why you did it? Meany. Okay. Um, YouTube, we haven't done a load of YouTube, but we're starting to do a lot more, and I'll show you some examples in a bit. Um, six six videos, 40,000 views. It's, it's all right, I guess, but I imagine that could be a lot higher considering how much people use YouTube. Um, and then Twitter, we've got fewer accounts. Um, and we've done specific projects with other things. So Pinterest, um, what we've got um, are book awards, and we know that lots of kind of mums like going on Pinterest to find out about recipes and kind of home decor and things. So we put a lot of the books in our book awards in there to try and encourage people to look at books. Um, I'll not talk for too long about that. Um, so this is our kind of strategy that isn't written down but is in our heads when we try and do things. Um, for live events, we've got Twitter to do our live updates. We've got Flickr for higher quality photos. Sometimes we do those as batches within events. Sometimes we went till the end of an event um, if we've got a professional photographer in rather than me and my rest of my colleagues. And then we batch upload them afterwards. Um, we've got Ustream um, to live stream via 3G. So if we're outside somewhere. Um, and then we download that and put it onto YouTube as a recorded live stream. And with Facebook, um, just because we've got 30-odd thousand people on our Facebook page, it's really hard to manage all the comments you get on Facebook. So we use that mainly for pre- and post-live event advertising and not actually live updates like we would with Twitter. Right, so here we go. This is my way Coventry's amazing thing now. Um, so who, has anyone been to Coventry? Yes. Okay, do you all know our ring road? It's There's a groan from someone. That was Sarah. Right, okay. So our ring road... Um, can I move now? I can, can't I? Right, okay. So, right, our ring road. So it's kind of a ring like this, and this is a junction, right? And you kind of go on at the junction and off at the junction. So it kind of goes a bit mad because cars are coming up here and cars are going off there. It's, it's mad. It's, it's, quite a, it's got eight junctions, but it's only about a mile diameter, so you go on and off. It's great fun. 
really great fun. Um, not when my husband's driving, though, because he's not very good at driving, and I got a bit scared. Um, my husband won't watch this recording, it'll be fine. Uh, so um, lots of people, kind of, when they think of Coventry, they get very scared by the ring road. Um, so, way look, we're getting rid of a bit of the ring road for you. Okay. So we were telling people about this. Um, by the way, the roads are going to be shut, because this obviously is the ring road underneath, and that's the bridge going up the top. So we were telling people, you know, the press, everything, this bridge is going to be demolished, and not many people were kind of take, paying attention. So we decided that people would pay attention as soon as they got stuck in a traffic jam. Um, so we decided, right, we're going to live tweet it, live photograph it. Um, so what this involved was me um, with a 3G iPad. Um, there's a big kind of tower block just about here, over, overlooking. Um, I was on the 10th floor. Um, it's a 60s building, so it's one of those windows that like fly open like that. They're kind of quite scary. And I was hanging this iPad out of the window to take photographs. Um, and it's quite a windy day as well, so you're like absolutely frozen, hands like this, taking photos. Um, so then the tweets started coming in, oh, I'm stuck here. And they go, oh, the council's got Rodrix on again. And we kind of can tweet them back and say, actually, you know, we're demolishing this bit of the ring road. And they go, what, you get rid of a bit of the ring road? for? Oh, I love my ring road. Because Coventry people are very precious over their ring road. Um, so then we could explain the whole thing, what, you know, we're demolishing this, and I'm going to tell you guys as well, because you, you used to all come to Coventry. Um, so this bridge is going, there's another bridge here, there's another bridge around there, um, and we're going to have a bridge deck all the way across, which is 100 metres wide. Um, so instead of having to go through a subway or a little pedestrian bridge to get from the station, which is here, to the city centre, which is there, you can walk on a normal piece of land and walk into town. Um, and then um, our new council offices are we're going from lots to one, which is going to be here. And um, Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, which I think is another Jardy customer, um, they've announced they're going to be next door to us on this business district which we're creating. And in some ways, it was quite a good thing to have such a map of kind of road closure because people actually realised, oh yes, you are actually reinvesting in the city, which is a very important thing for people of Coventry because they'll remember the stuff after the war when we got blitz, but everyone thinks oh, nothing's happened since. Well, this is a good way of publicising it. Um, so hopefully this will work. So um, what we're trying to do is um, not just put plans on our website, but actually explain. Yes, it's about um, Frygate, um, a development which is going to bring 13,000 much needed, well paid jobs to the city centre and a crucial element of the regeneration of the city centre. Um, I think it's interesting to note, first of all, that this is the biggest undertaking the city council has um, got involved in since the building of the Inner Ring Road. So, you know, there, it is a really sort of important scheme for the city. Um, so, this guy, he's our you know, he's quite he's a senior management and he'll, he'll just talk through this whole thing. Um, yeah, he, he looks quite geeky, but he's actually quite cool. Like, you know, I haven't told him this, but he, he, he knows this stuff. Um, and there's one point in this video where he uses the word crap. And, um, I mean, it's not a word I personally would use, but when you see him do it, it kind of fits, because he's basically saying, it looks crap right now, and we want to make it better. Um, and we, interestingly, had a few little complaints about that. Um, because they didn't expect the council to use such words. And then you're thinking, well, it's on, it's on YouTube. You get a lot worse words on YouTube than that. And, you know, it's not talking about a person. It's talking about something that the council did and just saying, you know, it might have worked at the time, but we're really sorry. It's not working now. We're going to make it better. So I'm not sure what your views are on that, but it was just an interesting thing that people were quite shocked by that. But that actually meant they were watching it. So that was good. So we've embedded that on the website, um, and that's what we try and do. We, we know that people are out there on social media, and we know that those people on social media probably wouldn't choose to come to the council website to find stuff out, but they'll quite happily moan on social media or, or say, Ooh. So we put the stuff on social media to try and pull them back in to say, no, this is all the other stuff that's happened in the city. Um, we're pretty much digging up every part of the city at the moment um, because we've got lots of EU grants coming in. Um, so not just this bit of the ring road getting taken apart, we've got bits, um, Tolborough Hospital, the lot, that, 
If you're trying to get into Coventry at the moment, I'd suggest coming by train. Um, it's a lot easier. Or walk. I walk to work. No problems for me at all, apart from when it rains. Then it's a pain. So, where am I going? That one? Is that me? Can I that one? No. Am I that one? No. Five? Where's Keynote gone? Is that Keynote? There we go, real. Cool. Um, another thing we've got, um, has anyone heard of Godiva Festival? Or am I just teaching you everything about Coventry in a short blast? Okay, Godiva Festival is a free family music festival in Coventry this year between the 4th and 6th of July. And um, it's free and Coventry people kind of live for it. It's like, yeah, it's free. We're going to down the park enjoying it. Um, and this is one of the photos we took two years ago. Um, I'm not sure if you can remember back that far, but um, it was the year all the festivals across the country were cancelled because of flooding in the middle of July. Um, yeah, a bit sad. Um, and it, it was getting worse and worse on the lead up to Godard Festival two years ago. And there was this umming and ahhing about can we go ahead or not? Um, and the problem was that the main field where all the stuff was happening looked quite nice because no one was walking on it. But backstage, where we were setting up all the stands, um, building the stages, was just getting more and more muddy, as you probably see by this picture. And we thought, you know, if, if we cancel it now, it's going to be that thing about, oh, cancel and health and safety, they're too worried about someone falling over. But the actual problem was that all the machinery, all the bands bringing stuff in, were just getting completely stuck, and there was no way we could get them out. Um, so what we did is we went down... Um, the morning where we thought it might have to be called off. And we just took loads of photos of backstage. So um, this is a caravan stuck in the mud. Um, lots of mud, more mud, more mud. This is an entry to one of the tents. Um, that's someone in the mud. There is also a picture of, of, of me where I, I stepped in the mud in my welly and it got stuck. And my wally's just hanging around in the mud. And I was there on one leg waiting for them to rescue me. Um, yeah, Stupid things you do whilst working for a council. Um, so, yeah, we, we took loads of photos. And what we did with this, we didn't actually tell anyone they were there. So we put a message out on Twitter and Facebook saying, really sorry, we've cancelled the festival. And we just put these on Flickr to see what happened. And people spotted them and started sharing them on social media. And that's kind of what we wanted to happen. I know it sounds a bit odd that you're not publicising what you're doing, but we want people to draw their own conclusions on why we cancelled it, rather than us saying, oh, yeah, you know, because of all the mud. Um, because we knew that people would walk around the public bit and think there's nothing wrong. Um, but this, this was backstage. And it worked really well. So it's a bit of a counter strategy, but it, it worked, which was cool. So, let's see if I can go back now. Cool. Right, so this is another thing we did. Um, that we had a big tower block um, in Coventry, which was used quite a lot with engineering, and it was getting knocked down to build some new houses in a primary school. And we knew that people in Coventry really cared about this, and obviously, when you get, get, see a tower blown up, everyone wants to see it. Um, so we thought, well, how do we stop hundreds of people just turning up this day? And the police were a little bit concerned as well. Um, so we thought, well, it's not really a council building, and it's, but we'll go along anyway. Um, and we thought, well, how are we going to do this? So we went down a week before and took an iPhone and tried to live stream over 3G. And it, it, it worked. We, you know, we waved back to the office. It all came out fine. So we thought, OK, right on the day. We'll advertise this live stream, and we're a little bit scared because you know whenever you say something's going to happen technically, it never quite works. Um, but we did it, and this is um, my colleague's iPhone actually. Um, bit of blue tack there on a tripod, right? And this was taken from one of our councillors who was there with us. Um, what you can't see because she took on her iPhone. If you kind of step back another three, four foot. All the other cameras were for Midlands Today, the BBC, Channel 4, on the massive cameras. But we were the only ones who was live streaming, who they were all doing it for recording. 
So they, you can see all the like, traditional media go, hmm, that's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it actually worked. And the best thing about live streaming on 3G is that there's a 30 second delay. So um, I heard um, from some friends of mine who didn't realise I was involved in this. Um, I said, oh yeah, we were um, watching the council's live stream and we thought, oh, it must be back now. So they went outside because they were nearby. They wanted to see it in the garden and they just missed it. But because there's a delay, the 30 second delay, by the time we w they went back into their house, it just started happening on their, on their um, internet. Um, what's it called? Monitor. Monitor. So that was quite cool. Um, and then again, you can see it, there you go, what a tree. Let's count that. <laughs> so although we live streamed it, we could export it and put it on YouTube and eight people liked it and one person didn't. Oh. So um, other stuff we're doing, um, starting to do lots more with infographics. So um, we've um, run some training with a, a infographic person for our data teams, our comms team, our designers, and that's trying to get them all to work together because designers can make things look pretty. The um, data people know the data, but the comms people kind of know what they want to say. So it's trying to get all those three people in the room and think, what do they want to achieve? So we started pre-planning infographics for certain campaigns, um, like the um, budget, elections, road improvements. So if I just show you... This is one um, we did for the elections that have just gone. Um, so what we've got in Coventry is a, a point where, I'm not sure how you'll vote, every council is a little bit different, but there's one person up for election from each ward. They, they don't all go at once. Not sure if anyone does it like that. Um, so I'm kind of showing Conservative, Labour, kind of where the spread is, because it's very hard to describe that. And then you put some daft things on there, like number of elastic bands used, um, total cups of tea. Um, that's what people cared about. When we shared this infographic out on um, Twitter and Facebook, they were all bothered about, how do you know how many cups of tea? Like we actually counted. But um, they, were, they were into that. But it also drew attention to the fact that we had elections, because I know lots of people just don't vote. So this is uh, partly make sure people know you know, if you want to change the colour, you know, have a look, see what you like, um, and then just some random stats. And then, because we'd done this, and we um, live tweet all our elections overnight, um, so I think I got to bed at half past six election morning. I'm not sure about anyone else, but that's a little bit, a little bit mad. But, um, so we tweeted every result. Um, we sent out a gov delivery email shot with all the results, probably about six o'clock in the morning and then emailed our design team and saying this is what you need to change so if you see the difference we're going to flip from one to the other that was the difference so you can see we stayed up all night and yes we may have a few new names as councillors but the the um the makeup is exactly the same but we've just got some turnout figures labor conservative things like that and that got shared across twitter um I've got now. I've got five minutes of an eye. I know you're all dying for lunch, so I'm almost done. So you please know. Um, so we know now that I mean, the staff-wise, everyone's getting reduced. So we need to evaluate it really strongly. So we don't do social media just for the sake of it. We do it for a purpose. So we use the analytics within social media, which obviously bias towards that social media channel. So yeah, there's numbers, but what does that actually mean? Um, website analytics are really fascinating. Um, just linked to um, what we were doing earlier with the content rating. I know you weren't all in there, but we know from our Google Analytics that as soon as we tweet or Facebook a link to a news release, it's read. If we just put a news release on the front page, no one reads it. So, I mean, that's a pretty good argument for not having news on our home page, but <laughs> putting stuff out on social media and then, you know, they can read more if they want. Um, one thing um, I did, I was training up one of our apprentices 
Um, and we found this really old piece of paper from our old tourism people, and it was 25 facts you didn't know about Coventry. Um, so I said, oh, you know, just practice, make a document page, put this on there. Um, and I said, okay, do you think that's interesting? She's like, yeah. And that's usually our, our boundary for what we put on social media. If it's interesting, we do it. So I said, okay, right, see if you can put this on Twitter and Facebook. And then I made her watch the Google real-time stats, and it just shot through the roof. Although people weren't really replying a few likes and shares on Facebook, but Google Analytics went through the roof that day, and it was the most popular bit of content, 25 facts about Coventry, for the entire two weeks. It's absolutely mad. So it's, it's quite interesting to see. Although people aren't necessarily interacting with you, they are looking at stuff, so it's, it's good to match your web stats with your social media stuff. Um, we've just got a system called Social Sign-In, um, which is a bit like Hootsuite, a bit like crowd control, um, enterprise, social media management things. Um, and that's doing lots of great analytics for us. Because um, um, our councillor wanted us to tweet every decision made in planning committee. And yeah, yeah, your face was my face. It's just like, really? Um, and we found that although no one replies, there's actually lo quite a lot of, in of stuff going on behind the scenes with that. Um, and we're a little bit naughty um, because lots of the planning documentation talks about erections, like erections of buildings. But the teenage boys who follow us for the um, snow clothes just really love it. They're like, oh, the council just said erection. Um, but, you know, it, it, it gets news out there. And often, you know, you, don't, you think planning committee doesn't affect you, but then it might t there might be a tweet about a road around the corner, which you might not walk past because people drive to work but you found out via Twitter, and we've had quite a few people like that go, ooh, I didn't know that was happening. And it actually happened to me. There were some flats getting built across the road from me, and I didn't realise until I saw it tweeted from one of my colleagues from planning committee, and I was like, oh, you idiot. Um, but I was quite happy with the flats, so I didn't have to say anything. Um, and then the fourth thing is feedback. Um, I'm quite sneaky, because I don't really put on my personal Twitter or Facebook that I work for the council, um, and I... You obviously hear people talking about councils when you go to the pub and friends of yours. Um, and I just kind of listen and ask them random questions and get some quite good feedback from them just because they don't know I work for a council. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend that. All right. Oh, two minutes. Brilliant. Got in there. Um, so there's lots of stuff we're doing on social media. Coventry.gov.uk slash social media. Um, just saying alongside social media, it is in my day job. My day job is looking after our Jardu website and we're just about to go through an upgrade to 112. So we're just trying to work out how we fit our social media stuff into web stuff. Um, I could talk forever, but I know I'm hungry, so you must be. Cool. Thank you.